after a cup of tea. <laughs> Um, is, uh, so let's start with the big question from that video, the one that you can't exactly or won't answer, but um, the, clip, the rooftop cliffhanger, Sherlock's plummet. Uh, have you been surprised by how much speculation that there's been about uh, online and the whole frenzy since that era? I think by the time we got to transmission, we knew it was going to be huge because uh, the mm. second series had been even bigger than the first and we started to think, oh my god, what are we going to do to them? Um, and he, he dies tragically, then he's behind a tree. Uh, and you have no idea how he possibly survived. And, uh, and at that point, we started to realize watching in Martin's house, this is, going to be, this is going to be ridiculous. People are going to be so cross. Um, and that's when it got really fun. <laughs> I mean, we were, we were watching it at Martin's, and I even haven't seen it, but then 150 times, actually approaching the last sort of 20 minutes. Uh, it was incredible, the atmosphere, wasn't it? It was just so exciting, because we knew everybody was watching at the same time. And uh, it's, a, it's a very rare thing in this age, a kind of communal viewing experience like that. And then as soon as it went, as soon as it finished, everyone's phones just went crazy. <laughs> and we, we went to, um, when we were showing Jeremy Lovely on a recce, Barts, where, you know, that happened. And I, I was saying to him, you know, there's quite a lot of speculation, it's quite a big thing now, and he said, I said, those people over there are probably fans. And he said, no, I think they're nurses, Sue. At which point I heard somebody go, and this is where he fell. <laughs> <laughs> so is the solution something that you could actually figure out from watching what's already aired? Or yes, what's something? keeping you all forgotten? <laughs> <laughs> the important thing to remember is there really are only a few ways you can fall off a roof and survive. It's not, it's not black magic. Alas. <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, so, so, is there anything else you're, you're willing to tell us in terms of teasing what the solution? Or I mean, is there, is there been anything online that you've seen that's actually got it right? We can't really comment on the online stuff because that gives away something, and also we haven't read it all, so we don't know everything. But um, it, it's a rational explanation. We did know it before we shot it. Mm -hmm. Uh, we, we just I mean, didn't have the money to shoot it at the time. <laughs> yeah. And we shot quite a lot of what you're going to see, right. what was already done at, at the end of series two. So we knew what we're, you know, how it was going to be done. And when you see the answer, uh, you'll see that, it, yes, we, we, we had to know in advance. It had to be, it had to be plotted out. Right. So it's, I mean, I don't mean, for me, I I'm, I'm really quite interested in all the talk uh, tends to be about how did you do it. And I don't believe that's the thing that people are really most excited about seeing. Because that's just an answer. How John is going to react. Yeah, I, yeah. I think it's when John and Charlotte yes. meet again. Yes. So we, we can tell you that that, that moment in the uh, finished episode one is, is electrifying. Yeah, it is. and it goes on and on. <laughs> it's great. So I think that's, I think that's the showstopper. Uh, and that sequence, a quite lengthy sequence, uh, I think it's probably my favourite show, uh, moment of show that we made mm -hmm. because, uh, because it's, it's lengthy. We, we go out all guns blazing uh, because you know, it's a long, complicated uh, emotional journey and it's extremely funny. Uh, so uh, I, I think it's a joy and a delight, and that is the showstopper of the episode. Wow. And of course, yes, you'll get an answer, <laughs> but not without some teasing on the way. And that uh, answer also involves. Uh, from what we've seen online, that Andrew Scott is coming back to shoot a little bit as well, who of course plays our beach so loving. He needed the dead body. Moriarty. <laughs> <laughs> so, so and Andrew's cheap. So. Yeah. <laughs> and he looks quite like Moriarty, so we got him. Yeah. It was actually cheaper to get Andrew Scott back to do that than to, than to get a mannequin. <laughs> and that and that was no point. And that, that's been a whole new career for him now, if you watch Murder Mysteries. He's often dead bodies now. It's great. But he is dead. He is dead. He is dead. Shot himself through the brainstem. You don't come back from that. Yeah. <laughs> there is a funny thing a lot of people have asked us about. You know, he can't be dead because you don't see the back of his head come on. <laughs> no, this is half past eight on BBC One. There are certain things you still can't show. <laughs> And that's interesting because you killed off like a, like a, a central main Sherlock Holmes uh, character. I mean, I mean, do you feel that you know eventually in the show that you you know the, the very last episode that you could actually kill off Sherlock or or John Watson? Is that impossible? Is that oh, you can't? They've been they've been solving crimes in Baker Street for over 110 years. They're not they're, ne they're never going to die, are they? Um, I 
and if he did, he'd just, he'd just pop up behind another tree. <laughs> I think there's something, there's something about that actually that mostly in all the years that people have done new stories and pastiches they sort of generally play fair yeah. there's something about it where you want to feel this they'll always be in baker street whether it's in, in 1888 or in the present day you just want to feel they're always going to be there so it's kind of the right thing to do is, is not to make anything definitive like that yeah except in, in the original <laughs> stories moriarty doesn't yeah moriarty dies he's dead yeah <laughs> so he shot himself in the face, what would you want? <laughs> Do you think they were up on that rooftop and fake suicide at each other? <laughs> Some of that is dysfunction. Nice no, that's clever. <laughs> um, what so, a waste of a scene. Yeah. <laughs> were you thinking if I was faking too? It would be a little bit cheap. It would be a little bit cheap. Um, <laughs> so how much Minecraft can we expect in uh, season five? Not enough. <laughs> quite a lot. Quite there a lot. is quite a lot. It's yeah. really nice, Michael. Yeah. We can't really say without giving anything away, I suppose. But yeah, there's a lot of nice stuff. Um, and it's uh, obviously the, the big thing we wanted to explore was in, um, in the original Conan Doyle story, Dr. Watson's reaction is, is really dealt with very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, he sort of forgives him, and we just thought, you know, that, that's just not going to happen. There's a massive impact. If your best friend had pretended to be dead, and you'd moved on and then just, you know, appeared and said, hi, uh, have you missed me? Um, that's going to have a big impact. So we wanted to explore how it really uh, affected all of the regulars, really, or all of his friends and extended family. Hmm. You know, he seems so cold towards his brother sometimes. What's your take on what Mycroft feels towards Sherlock? Do they have some bitter family history there, or is it just... This is, I mean, we were very inspired by it. Uh, a masterpiece film called uh, The Private Life of Sherlock Holmes by Billy Wilder, which if you haven't seen, you must see. It's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful film. Very funny, very melancholy film. And, and Billy Wilder and his, uh, his co-writer, uh, Izzy Diamond, um, did what we sort of feel is like they took a logical step on from Conan Doyle, which is to make, Mycroft is, is the British government, which is what Doyle says. but. In a way, he's always like the sinister British government. He's like the Diogenes Club is like a behind-the-scenes force, and and they do this. They have a much sort of spikier relationship, which we just thought was much more interesting than it, them just getting getting on. Right. So, but it all comes from a point of caring. I mean, even the very first episode where he's sort of encouraging John to spy on Sherlock, it's because he cares. He sort of wants to bring him inside the tent. Right. Uh, and really, in opposition. To Mycroft, you suddenly realise that Sherlock is like a loose cannon. He's, he's like a crazy younger brother. You know, at one point, Benedict said that there's going to be a uh, they, that they were signed on for a fourth season, and there's this little bit of scrambling of our star is sort of speaking a little prematurely. Where, where is that at uh, at this point? Well, to be that? honest, I'm sure Benedict is probably the single biggest yes you need to get. So if he has commissioned another series, uh, 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 good. Um, well done, well done. We didn't know we had commissioning power, but we are, but we are going to get into unknown other things. Yeah. <laughs> Mark and I were quite like knighthoods, and uh, we thought it maybe Benedict said it on a red carpet. That would, that would be, I think he asked for his own first home. Yeah, I think he'd get that line wrong. <laughs> uh, we're no, going to send him back out. You know, they are option for the fourth series. We just haven't worked out when we're going to do it. Excellent. So, have you commissioned series four? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sir so commissioned series two, actually. We were told when we were onto our breakfast television programme, one of Sue's very first appearances on television, and she was told to be brief to say nothing about series two. <laughs> and what she said was, yes, there's definitely going to be series two. And I was sitting there next to her thinking, you just commissioned it, you've still commissioned it. In the middle of the BBC, you walked in and robbed them of three films. <laughs> So that's, 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 that's how we do it on this show, it's your turn. turn. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's sent Benedict back out with his plans for five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> <laughs> you know, since, since they're so busy doing feature films, it does raise the question, given, given the rising stature, has anyone ever broached the idea of doing a Sherlock as a feature film? Well, we sort of do. But, uh, you know, it's, it's an interesting thought. Uh, they, you know, they, they take ages to set up films because people who like films are really slow compared to television people. <laughs> Uh, and, you know, we, we'd never want to do anything that uh, reduced the quantity we were making uh, even further. <laughs> <laughs> but you never know, who knows, who knows. 
we do have the, by accident and surprise, the two biggest British film stars out there in our show. <laughs> and Mark and I were just thinking, well, what if we were inventing Charlotte now? And we said, you know who'd be great in this? It would be Benedict Cumberbatch and Martin Freeman. And they would say, you wouldn't even get them in the same film. <laughs> Poxy British series made in a big leaky shed in Wales. <laughs> but we do get them and they're always delighted to come back. And same blokes as ever. Although they're much more famous than us and more talk to us. <laughs> you announced uh, three hints to the series three episodes. Rat, Wedding, and Bow. Um, wow. The... Bow. 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 <laughs> the first episode is called The Empty Curse. Um, you know, you, what can you sort of uh, tease to a little on that? Obviously, we find out uh, Resolve last uh, season's cliffhanger. That's it. It's a, it's a very short one. We thought <laughs> yeah. we'd just kick off a little reprise and then I thought, well, no, it's, I mean, it is, it's based on The Empty House, but only, uh, only a little. Um, I think Dodd himself would have admitted that the whole reasoning behind that story was just an excuse to bring Sherlock back. Mm -hmm. So, in a way, it's a similar thing. I mean, it's got a different plot, essentially, to The Empty House. But uh, I don't want to give too much away. But the, the, the enormously important thing is the impact that Sherlock's return has on, uh, on John Watson, particularly. Um, and then um, something with a rat in it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a biscuit tin, I don't know. And the second episode, um... You know, it's a sign of three seems to reference uh, when Watson meets the love of his life, Mary. Yes. <laughs> and the second hint is wedding. Yes. So therefore we should conclude from that. Well, I can, you know, hot off the presses from 110 years ago, uh, John <laughs> does get married uh, to Mary Watson. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We hoped you wouldn't go and sneak ahead and read the book. <laughs> But that's what happens when the secret is out before you're born. <laughs> uh, <laughs> damn it. And, uh, you know, keep watching this panel. <laughs> for a treat later. <laughs> so if, if John does get married, does Sherlock need to find a new roommate? And if, well, I think there is only one human being in the world who could tolerate being Sherlock. <laughs> <laughs> Who says he lets him move out? Okay, you're married now. Why are you living with her? <laughs> it's a big flat, we've established yeah. that. Yeah. It's, it's like the one in Friends. It's much bigger than it really would be. <laughs> it's a whole floor we yeah. yeah. We keep adding um, rooms. <laughs> and we do, actually. It's growing. <laughs> you, you know, since we're not here, we can talk about them. What would fans be surprised to learn about what Benedict and Martin are like on the set or their approach to their characters that they... Violent, the violence, I think, the violence. Oh. <laughs> the mood swings. Uh, the, um, the, um, the clown costume. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, they, they have a natural chemistry. We knew it from the, the, the moment that they read together. Yeah. The show was in front of our eyes, you know, and they just get on tremendously well. They're just completely different people, very like Sherlock and John are. Um, but they, they, they really just have a really good laugh, and it, it's all transmits itself onto the screen. I think you can really see how much love there is behind the behind the camera. I suppose the biggest surprise, if you, when you encounter them, if you if you encounter them in character first, is that actually uh, uh, Benedict is the goofy one, uh, and. Uh, uh, Martin is the very sardonic one, very dry one, so there's almost the other way around, isn't there? Um, but, you know, they're, they're just, they're, I mean, I'm just thinking that what you, you were saying, that when they read for the parts, yeah. we auditioned them. Yeah, yeah. We auditioned them. <laughs> in a room, a nice not place. even a nice room. <laughs> when they read, <laughs> together. When they read yeah. together. Yeah. 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 No, that's true, though. I mean, Benedict has a, he, he's really quite puppyish and sort of uh, bumbly, isn't he? And, yeah. Uh, and Martin is much more uh, sort of um, direct and, and, and earthed, really. I mean, maybe they should just put each other's costumes on and see what happens. <laughs> I think it'd be brilliant if Benedict solved the crime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. somebody, somebody, asked, somebody asked me earlier what, what difference there is now, because they're these huge fans. I said, well, actually, now they've got their own trailers. Because yeah. the first series, yeah. remember, we yeah. put them in a three-way yeah. with whoever else. And in the second series... <laughs> I think I missed that on the first oh, series. Oh, God. <laughs> Second series was only a two-way. 
I'm not another one. <laughs> They've split up. <laughs> uh, you made a reference to a treat, and I think that uh, I think it's time to uh, give them that treat, right? <laughs> After this plays, we'll uh, start taking questions from the audience. Can I do a bit of housekeeping here on this sure. um, thing? Actual housekeeping. Uh, actual housekeeping <laughs> in a naggy way. Um, if you're filming us at all, would you mind turning your cameras off now on this? Um, this is a, it's not a finished version yet, it's from the second episode. <laughs> you're cheering a number. It's. <laughs> <laughs> Exclusive. First see it. It's not dubbed. It's not finished. But also, we have promised them in the UK that it's not going to end up online anywhere, or you're not going to discuss the content of it. So please don't let us down on this. 